Hello and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com and today we're going to be looking at Ecree Rectangular Maps. What they are, how to use them, and how to create them, all within Blender 2.8. So sit back and relax, grab some popcorn, and let us get started. You can support this channel by visiting its Gumroad store, where you may find an assortment of digital assets for your projects. You can also visit my website, FowlsOnFantasy.com, where you can find an entire section dedicated to tutorials and art assets. Learn at your leisure in an environment dedicated to tutorials. Welcome back. So you may see that I'm using my old Blender EV Earth tutorial setup to demonstrate what an Ecru rectangular map is. If you would like to know how to create this, please see the link in the description below or in the sidebar above. You're actually looking at an Ecru rectangular map right now. What it is, is, is the texture that has been applied to the sphere. So, in essence, an Ecru rectangular map or an Ecru rectangular projection is a map that can be placed onto a sphere without any seams. They're particularly useful in texturing planets, as well as creating and texturing environments. In Blender 2.8, we can set the environment to an eco rectangular map by going to our shading tab and then changing our shading options from object to world. We'll be then greeted with a background and a world output node. First, we're going to want to make sure that we have an eco rectangular map. I'm going to use this one from my Space Nebula pack that you can find on my Gumroad store. I'm then going to plug it in to the color output, and you should see, if I activate render mode through Shift to Z, that it's no longer black, but rather a muddy red. But we're not actually seeing very much. That's because we haven't set our mapping. So I'm also going to grab a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. I'm then going to set this texture coordinate node to generate it. And then after that, I'm going to set the projection method from flat to sphere within the texture nodes settings. You'll see straight away that we're getting a good result. However, you may have eagle eyes and notice a very ugly scene that runs up the middle of our projection. This is a very easy fix. All that we have to do to get rid of this scene is we have to come down to our texture node settings and then we're going to set the interpolation type from linear to either cubic or closest. I tend to think that cubic works, works the best for these sort of things, so I'm going to set it to that. And there we go. Our scene has all but disappeared. So if you're working with any one of my textures from one of my texture packs from my Gumroad store, be sure to set it up like this. Now the reason we've used this mapping node, we can control how our map is oriented towards our viewport. So if I press zero, we can see that it's not a very interesting background. So I'm gonna probably wanna rotate it so we get a bit more variance and interest within our shot. There, that's looking quite good there. I also might increase the strength a little bit. And then I'm probably also gonna grab a contrast node and put it before the background. Just think of the background as a shader. And then I'm just gonna slightly reduce the brightness a little bit. Maybe bump up the contrast. Excellent. I think that's looking pretty good. So that is how we set up a typical environment equi-rectangular texture within Blender 2.8. And it's the same method when applying it to a sphere. Just think of the environment as an inverted sphere. So now that we've learned what an equi-rectangular map is and how to apply it to an environment and a sphere within Blender 2.8, we're now going to look at how we can actually create one for ourselves. 
Now, unfortunately, we can't really create one within the EV engine. Well, we can, but we can't create one that we can use elsewhere. So in order to get an equirectangular renderer, we want to change our render engine from EV to cycles. Now, this is ideal, especially for this build, because, uh, because my planet is set up specifically for EV using EV only nodes, but we will make do. In the old Blender 2.79 and below, we would have been able to do this using by baking a glossy sphere. However, unfortunately, due to Eevee having no baking capability as of yet, we cannot yet do that. As soon as we can do that, I'll be sure to post a tutorial. Now that we've changed our render engine to cycles, I'm then going to make sure to select the camera and then go down to my camera settings. You'll then see that we have our lens and then a type. I'm going to set the lens type from perspective to panoramic. And then the panorama type, I'm going to set it from fisheye equi solid to equi rectangular. Now, if I press zero and go into my camera viewport, we should see a equi rectangular projection of our current scene. I'm then able to move my camera around in space and change what we are seeing in the texture. So I can get very close to this planet and have a texture like this. Now with equirectangular textures, it's very, very important that we ensure that our resolution for the image that we're going to output is incredibly high. With all of my equirectangular maps, I tend to put them in the 8K range. So I'm just gonna times this value by four and times this one by four too. Now, I'm not going to just render this without showing you how to create some stars within Blender so you can render your own starscapes out. So I'm just going to delete this texture here so that we can generate our own stuff. Okay, now that we've deleted that, I'm going to add a very simple noise texture. And then I'm going to set, and then I'm going to plug the factor output into the color input of the brightness contrast. And then I'm going to take the vector output of the mapping and just plug it into the vector here. After that, I'm going to change the scale of the noise texture to 100. And maybe increase the detail to 5. And then I'm just going to drag that brightness down a lot so that we start to get a sparser and sparser cloud. Excellent. We're starting to get there a bit more. Oops something like that. And then I'm just gonna drag the contrast up again and then drag the brightness down until we get a sparse yet visible cloud. Something like this. So we've created a very basic star texture. Of course, we would probably wanna edit this and really play around with these settings and add more nodes, but this should get you going. And after that, all that we have to do is we have to render it. Excellent. So we've now completed this render. I'm just gonna save it. Now, the reason why it rendered uh, differently was because I actually have a, a keyframe set somewhere else. Um, but um, it still serves its purpose. So now I can grab, just turn this noise, get rid of this noise texture, and then grab the texture that we just created. So I'm gonna do that now, I'm just gonna grab uh, the texture. So I'm going to grab the equi texture, and then I'm going to line up. Then I'm going to put the output vector into the input vector of the image and put the color output into the color input of this bright contrast. And then I'm just going to do exactly the same thing that we did at the beginning. If you remember, we set it to sphere and then set the interpolation type to cubic. Now, if we pan around, and then we're gonna to wanna to make sure that our brightness is set to zero and our contrast is set to zero. And there we have it. We have our equirectangular background that we created 
in Blender 2.8. So if you're doing a space scene where you wanted to fly by a planet, but you didn't want to render the whole planet out, this would be a perfect alternative. But there we have it, there we go. I think I have shown you exactly what an equirectangular image is. I have shown you how to use them within Blender and I've shown you how to make them now. So thank you so much for watching. If you've learned something new, give this video a like. And if you'd like to see more content like this, consider hitting that subscribe and bell button to be notified on a new video's release. This is Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com, signing off.